Cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a moment to share my screen and then we're going to get started with Immerse for today. Welcome. We saw you yesterday. Had a wonderful time. Here to have a wonderful time again today. Um, okay. Let me get this going. Great. Okay. Can everyone see those slides? Great. Okay. So hello, YMCA. Welcome to our first Monday. Well, usually on Monday. Today's Tuesday. These will be on Monday going forward. Our first Monday workshop. So we'll have these workshops once a week um, to just go over kind of the topic, the phase of the design process that we're in, do some individual reflections, and then return before returning to our teams um, to continue project work um, throughout the rest of the week. So uh, this is just kind of a brief overview of kind of the weekly flow going forward. We're going to have these workshops on Mondays um, with some optional debrief time afterwards. So this workshop will be about, about an hour long and you'll have 30 minutes afterwards if you need to, to check in with your design coach. Um, then we'll have Tuesday, Wednesday, you'll have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your design coach to check in, uh, get any guidance that you need on the activities that we'll talk about at the end of this workshop and then also send out in the Slack. Um, basically just kind of the deliverables that we're putting forward that you'll need to complete for the week. They're all activities in Mural to kind of get you going throughout the design process and for today kind of launch your project. So I'm really excited about getting started on those. Um, so this is our agenda for today. We are gonna go through our agenda, doing that, check. Uh, we're gonna go through our Zoom norms, do some welcome welcomes and warm ups. Um, talk a little bit about identify. So go a little bit deeper into that topic that we started yesterday. Um, do some activities, defining what you know, uh, do an immerse overview. So that second phase in the design process, uh, do put together an initial topic list for our research and then have a little closing and look forward to what the rest of this week will hold. Um, so again, Zoom norms for today, would love videos on if possible. Um, feel free to use a virtual background that we have the link in the chat for. Uh, naming conventions, did I do mine yet? I can't remember. Let me make sure, give us a little, I didn't, that's so embarrassing. Okay, so there I am. Now I'm from DFA. Um, let us know what organization you're with, chat for questions, raise your hand if you need me to stop. I can't see you if you just raise your hand like this. So give me a little Zoom hand raise and we can stop and chat. Um, so after this workshop, we're hoping that you will be able to explain the importance of research. So why do we do this whole thing? Why do we start the design process with this? Um, take a moment to step back and identify some of your assumptions about your topic, um, develop a plan for testing those assumptions, and then get com comfortable with navigating the mural board for this week. Okay, so I think I'm going to pass this off to Kate for our warm up question. Yeah, to get everyone warmed up for today, we're going to do a quick two minute icebreaker. I love this one. Um, so we're going to split you into teams of three to four, and you'll have two minutes to share out with your team on the question. What is your favorite conversation that you've had with a stranger? And then we'll come back and share as a group. Thank y'all for sharing. That was really fun. I think conversations with strangers are something I've missed most since the pandemic. So it was fun to hear everyone's stories of interacting with strangers. Um, just for a minute or so, does anyone have a story they'd like to share with the group, whether their own or somebody else's that stood out to them? I think Joy has a great story and she should share. <laughs> I, um, I was telling them about how there was a time when I was uh, taking public transit home and um, I had gotten up for a pregnant woman to sit down and this um, older lady, she kind of like grabbed my hand and she was like, thank you. And I was like, of course, people that don't get up with, for pregnant people have no home training. And so I'm like, mm, nice to meet you. And we get off, I get off at my bus stop and she happened to get off at the bus stop with me. And we're waiting across the street and she just grabs my hand and she's like, so baby, how was your day? And then she goes into a long story about when she was in the Great Depression, when she survived the Great Depression, her parents were in the Great Depression. Um, she's going to have cocktails with her girlfriend and then they're going to the community center. She walked me the two blocks holding my hand to my house. And I was like, okay, well, this is my house. And she was like, okay, honey, see you later. Gave me a hug and a kiss and just kept on going. And I was like, wow, I don't know what just happened, but you are a vibe and I love you. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> awesome. Anyone else? 
Um, I'll go because I didn't have time to share with my group. But um, basically, guys, so like I'm really into fashion. So there was a dance that I had and I were like, oh, I'm also into astronomy. I don't know if you guys knew that. But my um, my jacket was like space themed. And I had no idea who like the person was. Of course, they were in my school. So they're like one of my peers. But we just like stood outside while we were waiting in line for like 15 minutes, having a like 15 minute long conversation on astronomy. I don't know the kid's name, but I miss him. But yeah, that was fun. Oh, thank you. I love that. Um, awesome. So Jane's going to lead us through the next stage of MERS, which is getting oriented with the mural. Thank you all so much for sharing during this icebreaker. Yeah, thank you. That was so fun. Conversations with strangers are a good time most of the time when you want them. Um, okay, but today now we're going to get started with our mural. Um, Kate, could you maybe send the link to our mural, Kate, design coach Kate? Sorry, we have so many Kates and Katies, but design coach Kate, if you could send the link to the mural in the chat so everyone could hop into this. Um, we're just going to take a second to get oriented. Um, we're going to go, you can also, if you're in your team's mural page, you can navigate to that. And there's a new board in there called Immerse Yoda. That's how you say your abbreviation. I think that that's kind of fun if it is. Um, so yeah, there's the link, go ahead and click on that. Today, we will be working in the leftmost boxes on the board. So it should say workshop, there's a little zero workshop. Maybe Kate, if you could get into the mural and summon everybody to that section, just so we can get oriented. Um, that's where we're gonna be working today. Uh, each person, we're gonna be doing some individual reflection. So each person on your team should claim their own little workspace. There's a little mark, you can kind of see it on here, a little area to put your name. Um, so everyone go ahead and grab one of those. Junhee will take one and Kate Gross, youth leader, if you'd like to participate, feel free to take one as well. Um, just to kind of do some individual reflection on our problem space topic area while we get um, set up. Is that mural? Are people able to get into the mural? No, I'm seeing a head shake from at least one person. No, I'm in. I'm just trying to edit the where it says name, if anyone else oh. is getting into that. You may not be able to. If you can't, just go ahead and throw a sticky note over that and click on. Great. So are we, can I get some reactions if we're doing good in the mural? Feeling good? Wonderful. No, I'm seeing a confused face from Ross, and that's the only face I can see. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm in the one in the team room, and I don't see anyone else popping up on my screen. So I don't know if I'm in the wrong place. Let me try this again. Um, but it seems like I'm very alone in this mural. Oh, I see Jane, or I see Joy, but I I only see two people. So that's I don't know if anyone is there other people in something that I'm not in. Let's just make sure this is an important. We will be in here for the whole activity, so let's make sure that we're all in the we're all feeling like we're in the right place. Um, I'm seeing in the link that I'm in. I'm seeing everyone here. Ross, you might be you might have gone rogue. Is that the one in the team room that everyone's in? Let me... They're not in the one in the team, team room, so they need to go to the one in the team room. Let me drop that link real quick. Yeah. They're Apologies, the team. team. We're getting this set up. There's a lot of murals. All right. There's a lot of room. We're going to get it all set up. Mm -hmm. OK, so go ahead and quit out of this one, navigate to the link that Joy just sent, and. Uh, do the thing that you were starting to do in the other one. And let me know if that is, are we all popping up there now? Yes. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Ross, for flagging that. I'm glad we're in the right place now. Cause so also just so you know how to get here, if you've bookmarked your mural workspace for your team, um, you'll also be able to access it through here. So if you, you'll go, you'll be going back here throughout the week. Um, to work on the activities later in the board. So just know that that is also where it is uh, if you need to get back. Um, okay, so if we're all there, everyone grab a box, stick a little sticky note on the box that you're going to use for today. And in this first little area titled Why Research Matters, um, we're just, this is just a space throughout the presentation to keep track of reasons um, that research, reasons for doing research that resonate with you. So we'll just kind of be talking broadly about why we do research, why it matters, and how to do it. Um, so just feel free to take some notes there for yourself, and then we'll ask everyone to share out maybe one highlight at the end. Um, 
So we're not gonna have a specific activity for this, but feel free to keep this running in the back and use it as a place to take notes. Okay, so I'll give a moment for everyone to get acquainted before we hop into things. Are there any questions before I get started with our content for today? Okay, cool. I will hop into it. Um, so this, you'll probably remember this from yesterday. This is our DFA design process. Um, and it's kind of our roadmap for the summer. Um, we are gonna be focusing on these first two today. So this top half, we call it understand. Um, and we're gonna focus on identify and immerse for today. Um, and these are where a lot of the research happens in our longer projects. And if we were doing this for longer than the summer, we'd probably return to these steps more than once throughout um, the course of the project um, to go deeper and deeper with your partner as um, situations call for it. Um, and your work here will really set the foundation for the rest of your summer. So it's really important to engage with the people most impacted by your topic, by your challenge area, um, to make sure that you're moving in a helpful and productive direction for everybody. So Kate's gonna walk us through what some of the goals are for our first stage, um, identify. Yeah, definitely. So as Jane mentioned, we're going to be focusing on the identify and understanding phase of the design process. So these are a few goals that we'll have when moving into this phase. So the first is to identify the challenge context. So looking at who's impacted and what problem space we wanna be focusing on. Second is framing the problem. So making sure that your scope, you have the right scale and you're addressing the problem in a way that isn't too broad or too narrow a scope. Um, third is defining and prioritizing stakeholders. So looking at all of the individuals that are affected by your problem space and also the people that are currently working towards solutions. And then finally, documenting facts, your own assumptions about the problem space and key questions you have when moving through this space. So we're going to be We've already worked on the first three phases of this problem space for you all, and you guys are gonna be jumping in for the fourth. So you can see that first we've identified a problem space. So this is the how can we for the summer. How can the YMCA support young people in addressing mental health in their local community? The second is framing the issue, which we've already done, and identified that supporting young people who are currently working towards solutions in a lot of different ways is a great way to do this. Third, we've defined a few, just a few of the main stakeholders involved and affected by this issue. So the YMCA, young people, and their local communities, depending on the context. And what's missing is document. So that's where you all will be jumping in, which is really exciting. You're gonna be mapping your own assumptions, collecting facts, and starting to talk to people, as Jane mentioned, that are most impacted by the issue. Yes, and I had to look forward just to double check that was our next slide that we're going to move into an activity, but really wanted to highlight because I'm not sure if we've really had this explicitly anywhere yet. This is kind of the question since you guys have chosen mental health as a challenge area that you're interested in looking into for the summer. This is kind of the how can we question, which is a tool that we use um, in design to kind of frame our work. Um, and this is kind of the question that we are proposing that you guys start with. So how can the YMCA support young people in addressing mental health in their local community? Um, so lock that in, write that down somewhere, we'll have it in many places, but know that this is kind of our starting question that we're really focusing around. Um, and with that in mind, um, we're going to move into our first activity for today. So go ahead and navigate to the box in your little individual mural space. It says number two, defining what you know. Um, and this is where we're going to take about the next five minutes um, to individually look through the questions in this section and write your responses in mural, just do, doing some individual reflection on our assumptions around this topic area, so around mental health um, and the assumptions and ideas that we're bringing into this project because a big part of Identify is I, identifying what those things are so that we know where we all stand before we get started. Um, so I'll just go ahead and set a five minute timer or Joy, if there's a way to do that on Zoom without going into breakout rooms let me know but if not i'm just going to set it on my phone and i'll give us a one minute warning um, but go ahead and go into that section and just start if we want to maybe play some music and work through some of those questions get situated within um, this challenge area we're going to have a moment now to debrief with um, some of your peers and some dfa staff so we're going to head into breakout rooms um, for the next five minutes we can set another uh, why don't we do the timer on Zoom, Joy, for five minutes. 
um, just to kind of debrief this conversation with uh, three or four people. So we do breakout rooms, three or four people, um, just kind of chat about how these questions went for you, um, any other thoughts that were coming up. Uh, Kate, else want to maybe share a couple highlights or things that were coming away from your breakout rooms and debriefing these questions? Um, something that Junie and I talked about was like how mental health is like such a broad like area and like we have a lot of like things coming into it like perceptions and things but while we do more research it will like really boil it down to like a specific topic and figure out what part of the problem space we really want to approach. Um, so that's cool and I know we're I think we're doing the ideation group he's mentioning soon. Like, that'll be fun. Yeah, cool. Thank you for sharing that. Because yeah, I think we'll get to this in a minute, but this is definitely the part of the process where it's like, this is such a huge topic and there's so many ways that it can go and it can feel really intimidating to know where to start and what kind of even questions to start asking with such a broad topic. So it's great that you're already thinking about that um, and just know that we have some tools coming up that can help you work through that. Um, anyone else have anything that was coming up that you want to share? Feel free to share it in the chat as well. No worries if not. We got we have a lot to get through. So I can I can keep rolling and feel free, always throw stuff in the chat. I love to see people chatting it up. So do what you need to do there. Um, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and move on to immerse. Um, so that was kind of our little touch of identifying. We did a lot of that for you because that takes a lot of prep work. So you're welcome. We helped with identify and you finished it off for us. Um, we're gonna now move into immerse. Um, so hopefully you've kind of started building. Uh, doing that exercise to think about what we're bringing into this project and what kinds of questions that we'll need to ask um, to challenge those assumptions that you guys were kind of identifying um, and build on our knowledge. Um, so as this activity, con activity concludes, remember to keep taking notes um, in that section number one in the mural. Um, if there are any things that are coming up for you around the importance of research, because remember, we want to be keeping track of those for yourself and we'll share them out at the end. Um, I'm also seeing in the chat that Laura had a great question about investigating the disparities in access to mental health care. That's great. And I think will be something that can really help kind of shape what we're going to be talking about in this immerse section and how we can start learning more about that. Um, cause that's a great question to explore. Um, okay. So on to immerse, um, our goals for this part of the process are to be able to explain the importance of research, um, start developing empathetic relationships with our stakeholders. Um, and discuss possible challenge areas. So this is really where the bulk of our research happens. Um, and like I said, Rhea, this is where I talk about how things are confusing right now, because I want to acknowledge that this is the kind of scary part of the process where this is my one of my favorite visualizations of the design process, because um, I think it just does a really good job of capturing kind of how it feels to be going through it, because we're in this part right now. And this is definitely how I feel right now. Um, which is all over the place. There's so many, we're taking in so much information. There's a wide range of topics that we can go into and it's difficult to know where to start. Um, so just know that it, I, we all know that it feels messy and overwhelming right now, but it's just because we're in this part of the process and we're gonna be working through it. Um, having, providing you with the tools and support to kind of start making sense and narrowing down into a challenge area that is gonna feel much more manageable, um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, so probably wondering, okay, that sounds great, but how do I actually do that? Like, what does it actually mean to do research? How do I make sense of this giant squiggly ball of confusing everything? Um, so that's a great question. We're gonna start talking about that. Um, this week, we're gonna be focusing on two main types of topics and tools, um, really diving into initial research and user research. So before we get into the weeds on what initial research is, just wanted to take a quick second to divide, to find a term that I'll be using a lot um, when I'm referring to lived experience, we just use that as a word to kind of talk about someone who has personal life experiences with the topic. Another term that people use or is living expert, someone who is just an expert in their own life. Um, and that those are really the people that we want to be talking to. Um, design research is all about centering that experience and finding ways to uplift the voices of people most impacted by the challenges that we're looking at. Um, 
So onto the goals of initial research. When we say initial research, we're really gonna be starting to explore the current discussions on the challenge, identify existing primary sources and prepare for user research. So prepare for talking to people. Um, it's really about getting a lay of the land before you go out and talk to people. Um, and the conversations that you have with people in real life, you know, outside of initial research are really focused on the experiences and insights that you can't get from other sources. So this is the time to kind of see what's out there, get a basic lay of the land, and then ask those deeper questions, prepare to ask those deeper questions in user research. Um, so we'll do this by doing some reading and maybe even some watching and listening and other fun things. Um, so these are kind of the four categories that we have identified um, as categories, potential categories for initial research. Obviously there's many more, but we just kind of have these to help get us started. Um, and it's just a framework to kind of help narrow down that squiggly mess of everything. Um, so expert interviews, we kind of talk about as opportunities to learn from people who have a deep understanding of a topic area on a high level. Um, they may or may not have lived experience with the topic, um, but are a great, under, great resource for understanding the big picture. You know, these could be reading an interview that someone did with a mental health professional or watching, watching an interview, learning from some lecture that a professor posted online, those kinds of things. Um, news and editorials are a great way to hear directly from people with lived experience without conducting your own interviews and get a broad understanding of how people think about these topics. So news and editorials referring to journalism, read an article in the paper, the journalist has done an interview already and they've kind of started talking to people on the ground. Um, and you can kind of get a taste for what people's opinions and thoughts are through that. Um, existing narratives is my favorite one because I think it's fun because it can range from everything from blog posts to podcasts, poetry, music, just people are already sharing their thoughts and opinions on our topics in creative ways online. Um, so get into it, get on social media, Reddit, everything out there, people are posting their ideas and all you have to do is Google them. Um, so that can be a really great and fun way to get going on primary research and just see what people are already sharing. Um, and then finally, reports and journals are kind of your traditional secondary research that you would learn about in school, sources like studies or other academic papers. Um, these can be a great way to find compelling statistics, um, so some numbers that really help tell your story. And this leads us into some important things to consider while doing this research that I believe Kate will walk us through. Yeah, definitely. So as you're exploring all the resources that Jane was talking about above, these are just a few things to consider that can really help and enrich your research process. So the first thing is looking for important statistics in your problem space. And I think this is a really great way to, one, understand your problem space better. So what's happening, where it's happening, and who is most impacted, and also tell a compelling story throughout your design process. So keep those in your back pocket as you discover them. Something else I think is super important is looking at what's currently working in your issue space. So it's important to not only look at what's going wrong, but also celebrate things that are working. And as designers, um, we wanna be collaborative and really build upon solutions that are already there. And in many cases, there's solutions that are already working, but perhaps just need more funding or resources to, be, to get on the ground. Um, and that being said, it's also important to both look at what's working and also what opportunity gaps exist. So, what isn't working, who isn't being served, and what solutions could be working better. Sweet. So there are lots of different ways to consider the areas um, that people are currently working on and also gaps, um, opportunity gaps. One of my favorite ways is the stakeholder map, which is a tool you may use throughout the design process. So this is a great way to examine a problem space and visualize all of the different people and stakeholders that are affected by an issue. Um, and I think that during research, it's really important to not only look at your main stakeholders, so for example, the YMCA, young people, and your communities, which we identified earlier in the process, but really look at all the other people that are impacted and have touch points with this issue. And I think this is a great way to really understand that a design issue or a social issue affects a lot of different people and not just a few primary stakeholders. And yeah, so this is just a quick thank you, Kate, for that overview. And I just put this in the chat. But there's a wonderful resource for diving into stakeholder mapping in the mural if you're wanting more information on that. But this is just a quick sneak peek into this week. Um, we'll be doing this initial research by finding at least one source in each of these categories and sharing your notes and or takeaways in mural. So just a sneak peek looking ahead. 
Um, I'm going to go through our user research slides now. Um, this is where we start to learn about the challenge. So we learn about the challenge directly from our users. And when I say users, we've been using this a lot. This is just a word that is referring to community members who would be using your design. Um, the, so in this case, it is YMCA staff, other community members, and you guys are your own users because we're talking about how the YMCA can help support young leaders in working in these challenge areas. And you guys are young leaders working in this challenge area. So how perfect is that? Um, and Kate, now I'm going to throw it back to Kate, and she's going to give us a little bit more context on what's so cool about that. Yeah, definitely. So as Jane mentioned, in defining the word user, this problem space is really unique and exciting because you all will have the opportunity to be your own users. And I'm going to walk through why that's important and unique for this challenge. Um, so you're closest to the problem space because you are users and you're working with the YMCA and directly impacted by these issues. Um, and thus, you're also closest to equitable and effective solutions. So we really like this framework from the Creative Reaction Lab, which is a nonprofit based out of St. Louis. Um, and they have a great framework called Three Designers for Justice, which helps define the different roles that designers can occupy um, in addressing a design challenge and working on a problem space. So you can see in the little graphic for the right, um, they, they distinguish a difference between equity designers and design allies. So equity designers are people that have lived experience with an issue, a term that Jane defined earlier, um, they're close to the problem, they experience it themselves, and thus are closest to that insight that can help them develop equitable and impactful solutions. And design allies, by contrast, can also work on a problem challenge, but they don't have lived experience with an issue. So instead, they can help use their knowledge, power, resources, and transfer that to equity designers to help them do their work and further their solutions. So this problem space is super unique because you all will be equity designers and assume that role in the project, which is a really exciting space to occupy. And it also means that you are closest to developing equitable and effective solutions. Yeah, thank you, Kay. I think that this is, and also I just put the link in the chat to an article to learn more. Creative Reaction Lab is also another wonderful um, organization doing great work um, around design if you're interested in learning more from them, because I, I went to school in St. Louis. I've definitely learned a lot from them. Um, so we're going to speed through this for the sake of time a little bit and get going on our next activity. Um, but we are going to, there are lots of great tools for doing user research. Um, so observations and user generated artifacts are two of them that you can learn more about in the resources that we'll be sending out this week. Um, but today and for the summer, we're really going to be focusing on interviews um, and what that looks like. So this is a little screenshot of the activity you'll be doing this week around interviews, um, identifying who your interview subject is. Um, some notes about your potential relationship with them, and then similar to what we did in the design sprint talking about what are the topics that we want to cover in an interview and what are the questions that we need to ask. And this is what we call a discussion guide. And for me, I, I love discussion guides. I definitely need these when I'm conducting interviews. I find them very, very helpful. Um, some best practices, like I said yesterday, um, we like to assign roles, have a note taker and a facilitator. So not everyone Everyone knows clearly what they're doing in the interview and can focus on their one role. Um, Open-ended questions, moving from broad to specific. So starting with really big questions and moving down into narrow ones focused on smaller experiences. Um, I like to ask for whys and hows. So we call that laddering, just a fancy term for if you don't know what to say, ask why and you can get deeper and more insights um, because we really like to prop for stories. And these are some really helpful question, sample question starters that are also in your mural board for this week that I personally use to kind of get me started and prompt for those anecdotes. Um, because we really want people to tell stories, not necessarily their interpretations of the stories. We want that concrete anecdote. Um, it was really valuable for the work we're trying to do. So I think for the sake of time, we were going to do some individual brainstorming around some of the initial topics that we want to research, but we might just go ahead and move into um, a breakout room with your team where we can look at the, if you take a look at your mural board, this will be number three initial topic list where we're just gonna be taking some time to think about based off of our assumptions and this question that we wanna explore this week, what are some topics that we wanna look into? So the one that Alora brought up um, around disparities in mental health care is a topic, is a great research topic to dive deeper into in your user research and in your initial research. Um, so with that, with that as an example, we're probably going to take about the next 10 
minutes um, to go ahead and go into a team breakout room. Uh, Kate will be joining you along with Junhee to just kind of have a conversation about what topics you guys want to explore in mental health um, to get, get you started on your research. Hopefully that was a good uh, start to your activities for the week. We are a little bit behind schedule. I would love to hear about all the things that you were talking about, but maybe if you could throw them in the chat, I'm gonna get rolling so that we can get everyone out on time because we're already a minute over of our workshop period. So apologies for that. Um, everyone was just having such wonderful conversations that it's hard to slow down, I understand. Um, so welcome back. Um, hopefully that was a good way to start our conversations for the week and you kind of got a look, you were working in kind of our first deliverable for the week. Um, we, Going forward, that's going to be, so define what we know is one of the weekly deliverables, weekly goals that we're asking you to focus on. The other two being plan and conduct initial research, plan and conduct user research, and debrief interviews. So if you zoom out of the mural and scroll to the right, you can kind of see all of the different activities that we're proposing for this week, and probably because this is a chunky week into next week, um, just really thinking about doing this research and really wanting to emphasize that our goals right now are to kind of take off the designer I have ideas hat and put on the I'm here to learn about this challenge area and learn what's out there. Um, because kind of like we talked about in the workshop yesterday, one person's watermelon idea is not going to work for everybody. Um, and we, just, we really want to make sure that our ideas are grounded in research with from and with the communities that they're going to be most impacting. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we'll talk about this more in your huddle. And if you meet after this for the, our little 30 minute chat time, um, but feel free to work with um, Kate, your youth leader and with your design coaches and also your own networks to start reaching out to people that are potentially within. If you want to make a stakeholder map, that's a great tool. Like I said, that's in the mural, really thinking about who's impacted by this challenge area and who you can talk to, who your YMCA serves. Um, that could probably be a great question that Kate could help answer. Um, to just really start connecting with people and setting up some times to have conversations with them and use the tools that are in this um, mural board to get started on that. So like I said, this is your mural for the week. Um, the activities are up at the top and then there's this blank workspace down at the bottom. We're basically kind of promoting this as a home base for all of your immerse needs. So if you wanna use Google Drive for anything, um, just go ahead and if you just copy and paste the URL into the workspace, it'll be there. And so this is kind of your home base for everything immerse. Everything should be housed here. You don't necessarily have to do all of your work here, but just make sure it's linked so that we can get there um, from this. And then just a quick overview of our goals for the week. Um, so after doing all of these weekly deliverables that we'll send out in Slack later today as well. So don't worry if you miss those. Um, but by the end of this week, we're hoping that you'll be able to explain the importance of conducting multiple types of research because we'll be doing multiple types of research and um, apply design tools to conduct multiple, multiple types of research, start developing those empathetic relationships with stakeholders and discuss your challenge area in greater depth that considers the perspectives of different stakeholders. Because like we said, you came up with these great different topics to learn um, and dive deeper into. And so hopefully you'll get a chance to do that and start fleshing out what this challenge could look like and where um, getting a lay of the land, because that's what Immerse is all about. Um, so quickly before we leave, apologies for keeping five minutes over, um, just, to re, just to revisit our goals for this workshop. Um, the first one being to explain the importance of research. I would love if everyone could kind of go back up to that little box that we had at the top um, and share what was standing out to you as reasons that it's important to conduct research. Um, so while we, everyone throw that in the chat and then I'll ask Kate, design coach Kate to throw our feedback form in the chat because we also just have a few questions. We, like I said, like to iterate on these workshops, make sure they're the best for you. Um, so go ahead and share your feedback using that form. Uh, so to reiterate, share your feedback using the form and then share at least one reason that research seemed important to you in the chat. Um, and then I think we may have, we'll open up your, we'll open up your team room again for you to hop into if you have any closing thoughts, things you want to wrap up. One thing to do may be to solidify the time uh, that you want to meet with your design coaches um, in your huddle, uh, in your, there was an activity in the teaming workshop on that. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to complete that and solidify a time that you wanted to meet, go ahead and figure that out. Um, we'll reopen the rooms and you can hop in there, but. Thanks for a great workshop.